So I was able to talk to a gentleman who was well-to-do and was in the position, a uh, very high-ranking uh, retired authority. This gentleman actually told me something that I just never really heard anybody saying online or anything, so I was pretty intrigued. But what I really want to talk about is the ghost cities in China. There's over a, a hundred million unoccupied units in China, just like what's shown on the, the screen right now. In fact, I'll, I'll pull up another picture as well. Uh, I don't think people get the brevity of this. These are, um, these are actually, let's see, I hope that's not playing. Okay. These are uninhabited. They are completely empty apartments or what we think are apartments, but no one has actually seen the majority of the insides of these buildings. Now, when you look at all of the identical buildings and, and the setups of these, it almost looks like, almost like, I hate to say it, but like a ghetto. Like what you see uh, in Section 8 houses in Chicago, where there's just building after building after building after building. So I was able to talk to a gentleman who was well-to-do and was in the position a uh, very high-ranking uh, retired authority. This gentleman actually told me something that I just never really heard anybody saying online or anything, so I was pretty intrigued. He said that the ghost cities are not for them, it's actually for us. He said that the ghost cities are not for them. It's actually for us. What he suggested is that, and this is crazy. And mind you, you, you have to be open-minded to think about this kind of stuff. But he said, after the next conflict, which many of you know, I can't say the W word, otherwise I'll get marked. After the next great conflict, in their heads, they win. And we, I don't know what would happen to our country, but say if our country was completely wrecked, they would take one third of us and put them over there in this city, this ghost city, a hundred million, which by the way, to remind you, is 10 times, actually more than 10 times larger than the city of New York. I believe the city of New York is 8.9 million people. So this is a gigantic city. They have spent millions and millions. I don't know if it's into the trillions or billions, Mark. I would assume billions, but don't know. Of dollars or yen on these, and nobody lives there. It's been a fascination of many medias, um, everywhere from Time to Nat, Nat Geo has done specials on this because it's creepy. It's an entire city, 10 times the size of New York, and it's unoccupied and people aren't putting two and two together this isn't for them now mind you uh i wish i could give you more information on this gentleman but mind you when somebody like this says that those cities are not for them it's for us it was really really creepy it was the fact uh that they are like, what if this was potentially somewhere where they would hold us, where this would be a city where they would have uh, factories right out of the zone? What's weird is what people are saying about it is they have all the, this housing and then they have it set up to build basically factories outside of the main living quarters. And another thing uh, that kind of crossed my mind, like, what if they knew about something that was going to destroy our country and what if they were actually working with our country to build this? It's like the uh, the uh, Deagle estimation in 2025, nobody knows why. They, they've used all this data and they say that our, like our population is going to drop from 350 million people all the way down to about 100 million people. And people have debated whether, you know, like, wh what is this using? What is this all about? But basically, two-thirds of us disappear, according to this graph. And at the same time, they're popping up a, <laughs> basically, a city with enough housing for 100 million people. It's just kind of odd. It's almost the exact same amount 
that they say. And this is the weird part. In China, the ghost cities used to have like 65 million uninhabited uh, apartments, whatever else. The Deagle used to say 65 million. And people noticed it went, it went up. It actually said that less of us were going to survive or whatever. It, it, Deagle doesn't say anything. It just says this will be the population. And what's weird is China just goes up a little bit, but it, there's no dramatic um, downing. But if you look at all the countries they say are going to go down, it's only our allies. And then our uh, enemies don't have much change at all. So I, I just just want people to think open-mindedly about this. The ghost cities, it's fascinating. They are spending into the billions. I mean, if you see how many of these buildings actually exist, and it's in a city that nobody's there. Echo, echo, echo. It's like a scene out of Twilight Zone. I mean, this is something that I... I uh, I don't think they can explain with, oh, we're, we're about to expand and we know what our population is going to be, so we're building this. No, this is weird. They have actually copied parts of our cities, Paris, New York, I'm, no, I'm sorry, and by our, I mean us and our allies. Isn't that weird? Like, uh, there's just so many ideas that ran through my head when he said that. And just the, the, the weirdest part is like that, that they've actually copied Paris, they've copied New York, they've copied famous cities and made them into this ghost city, which is still uninhabited. Now, we have a huge group of people that are forming, um, just in, including our over 4,000 in Discord, that are actually meeting up in all the states. So we do have state-by-state -state groups uh, prepping and preparing together. People ask, what are we preparing for? <laughs> There's an endless, a bigger list than 21 of things that you should, you know, consider, but not worry about. It's the whole point of uh, preparing or ensuring yourself is to make yourself uh, basically prepared for anything. In the event it happens, you will be uh, least affected. The thing is, is, you know, you can't control what happens. You know, even insurance has the act of God uh, category. There's just things you can't, you, you don't control. You know, you could be walking across the street and die. That's something you can't control. You know, you can't control somebody else driving 90 and blindsiding you. But what you can control uh, is logical. Uh, the thing is, is say, you know, you lose power for an entire month or what DHS is actually suggesting you prepare for six months to a year, say the entire country loses power. There's more than just food and water that you need. <laughs> There's probably self-protection and all sorts of other things on that list. So, mind you, it is only logical if you get insurance on your electronics, insurance on your wedding ring, insurance on your house, insurance on your car, why don't you have insurance on your body? Have supplies, food, water, those kind of things. If, if you put it in that kind of way, people won't consider you so nuts. Because normally people think that preppers are nuts and out there and think it's the end of the world tomorrow. That's not the fact. Uh, that's a that's a possibility, but it's not a fact. <laughs>